glad you joined us. I am Apostle Linda Learcy with Holding Forth the Word of Life. Today I want to give a message I think that is very apropos to the times that we are living in. Living in quietness and confidence forever. Now isn't that a wonderful goal? Don't you want to have a life where you know every day you are lifing out quietness and confidence? particularly when things are not going well, uh, when you are in situations of sickness, tragedy, when you are in situations of great strife or turmoil, particularly in fear. Uh, in our country right now, there is a lot of division and people have a hard time knowing exactly what is going on. Um, today, the people that are in the administration of our government are moving in great wickedness, purporting great evil and their belief system, particularly in areas of child sacrifice, uh, murder, murdering children, which is a euphemism uh, that they call abortion. Uh, not only that, but there seems to be a proliferation of moving in types of deviant behavior, calling good evil and evil could. And for the disciple of Jesus Christ, this can be disconcerting, but we know that we win. We know the devil loses and that Jesus Christ always leads us in a victorious procession in him. But to mitigate these circumstances, the Holy Spirit wants us to live quietly and with great confidence. So how do we get there? How does that become a reality, a true reality in our life? Just not lip service, but something that we're experiencing. It comes through the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Now for that phrase, what is the peaceable fruit? fruit of righteousness. Well, we find that in scripture. And I want to encourage you to take your Bible and to follow along with me. The word of God is essential for your life. Um, it is not optional. You need to know what God's word says. You need to be able to implant it into your soul, which is the area of your intellect, which is the area of your emotions, your mind and your will. As it is implanted in your soul, your soul will be delivered. Your soul will be, as the scripture says, saved. That means made whole. That means healed. In today's culture, unfortunately, many churches have gotten away from scripture. They've gotten away from pure studying the Bible. And that is to our detriment. So again, I would encourage you to get your word and follow along with me. So we're looking at now what the scripture says about the peaceable fruit of righteousness. And for that, we go to Isaiah 32, 17. The fruit of righteousness will be peace. The fruit of righteousness will be peace. That is the peaceable fruit of righteousness. The effect, in other words, the result of righteousness the power of righteousness that you will experience will be quietness and confidence forever. Powerful two phrases here. The peaceable fruit of righteousness will life out in you two major things, quietness and confidence. Now, quietness does not mean passivity or timidity. No, you can move in quietness yet be extremely bold and use your voice of authority. Uh, the Hebrew word for quietness is a shaka, and it means to literally be quiet or tranquil, uh, at rest, being undisturbed. So when do you need to be undisturbed? When do you need to be tranquil? Well, when everything around you uh, is going to pieces. When you are in dire circumstances, when you receive bad news, when people that you are highly connected to are going through a trial or tribulation. This is a time that if you have the peaceable fruit of righteousness in your life, 
in spite of the circumstances, inwardly, you will find a place of tranquility and you, you will not be moved by your emotions. You will not panic. You will not move in fear, but you will move in peace. I like the phrase, you will be undisturbed. Now, how do we get to this place in our life? Well, I want you to follow along with me because the Holy Spirit is going to show you how this is produced in your life. The second thing that the effect of righteousness produces is confidence. And the scripture says that these are both qualities that will be with you forever. In other words, you will actually go in uh, into heaven from your earthly plane into heaven manifesting these two things, quietness and confidence. Confidence in Hebrew uh, means uh, betak, and betak means a place of refuge, security, and safety. Confi you can have confidence when you are in the place of refuge, and we know that Jesus is our refuge, and he is our strength. In Christ, there is a true place of of security and safety. And when do you need security and safety? Again, when there's storms all around you, when you are being shaken, when other people that you love dearly are being shaken, when you see the nations being shaken. Uh, this is the time where when you are showing forth the fruit of the peaceable part of righteousness, you, you're going to have that beautiful place where you can come into the Lord. And although everything around you is shaken, you're not shaken because you have found a place in the kingdom. The only place that you're going to find security in this world is in the kingdom of God. And Jesus taught us that the kingdom of God is not necessarily a geographical place. No, it is a place within you and that place within you is a place of refuge and the holy spirit you know as you've received christ is in you christ is abiding in you therefore the kingdom is abiding in you and you slip into that because you are in christ so no matter what is going on around you you are stable you're not double-minded so as i've shared that with you you should be thinking, okay, is that true of me? And you may say, well, you know, sometimes that is true of me. Sometimes that's not true of me. In certain circumstances, I am very tranquil when other people are panicking. But I have to be honest, there are other situations I've been in that have been very strong in my life that I have lost my footing, that I've lost my place of safety. If you can see that, that means that you are... A humble person or grabbing a hold of honesty and that is a very good thing honesty goes a long way with the Lord and and we need to be able to measure our progress by how we respond and react to things particularly in our soul when the emotions of our life lead the way we lose battles we lose our faith battles and the Lord wants us to win those battles and we can only win those battles in the power of the holy spirit in the power of our own spirit because jesus is the one who must fight our battles and he lives by the holy spirit in our spirit man and our emotions must bow down to christ now i want to share this passage john 15 1 through 8 and again this is a template of how the Lord gets us to a place where we are extremely fruitful and we particularly produce the um, peaceable fruit of righteousness in our life. Jesus is speaking and he's saying, I am the true vine, powerful. Jesus is the true vine. Only Jesus Christ is the true vine. There is no other person that is the true vine in your life. And my father is the vine dresser. So God, our father, is like the gardener. He makes the decisions on what needs to be done with the branches that are connected vitally to the vine. 
Jesus goes on to say, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. People get a little confused here because Christ uses the term every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. What he's speaking of here is that there are a lot of di disciples that are not true disciples. There are a lot of Christians who are very surface or superficial in their work with the Lord. They appear to be in Christ. They, come, they appear to be connected uh, to Jesus by the things they do. Uh, they may go to church. They may be on committees. They may have a great singing voice. Uh, they may even do kind things for people. But it's not rooted in Christ. It's not motivated or directed by the Holy Spirit. No, these are all things that they are doing to gain favor with people and even to gain favor with God. So this is a very superficial connection. And this type of person is not bearing fruit. And therefore, this person is removed. Many times in ministries, um, are in your circle of friends you are a true disciple of jesus your ministry is based on developing disciples of jesus people don't like the word they get offended very easily uh, maybe they have particularly pet sins in their life that they're not willing to give up and over time you're going to see that these same people will be removed from your fellowship. This is an indication that these people are not actually rooted and grounded in Christ. Anybody who's easily offended, anybody who doesn't want to go deeper in the Lord, that wants to remain at a very superficial or shallow level, you have to question if that person is really born again and in Christ in the vine. So again, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bear fruit, he prunes. So as we look at this, look at the attachments or connections that people have. And if you can see that people are more attached to worldly things than to Christ, that is a clear division that separation or removal is going to take place. They're very much interested in having worldly friends or they're very much interested in passions of the world. So much so that it overshadows their passion for being in Christ. That is another indication. These people are not going to bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Now, there are other people, true believers that are rooted in Christ. They are connected. Their love for God supersedes any other recreation or anything that the world could offer them. Uh, those things are really optional to that uh, disciple of Christ. What is never optional is their relationship to Jesus and their desire not only to be connected to Christ, the true vine, but to go deeper in that connection. And so the father takes every branch that bears fruit and he prunes it that it may bear more fruit. So this is the crux of everything. When you know the Lord Jesus and you love him and you're intimately intertwined with him, you are in the vine. See, it's the vine that actually produces the power for the fruit, the sap of the vine causes the, the branch to bear the fruit. The energy, the power is in the vine. So when the branch is in the vine, it will, by the grace of God, produce fruit. And at that point, the Lord is going to go to work in you to prune you. Now, we know what pruning is. Pruning is a cutting away. Uh, and when we look at pruning, we have to see that there, there's pain involved in subtraction or taking things out of your life or stopping certain habits or ways of 
thinking that you're very used to and the vine dresser our father god will begin to pinpoint certain things in us and we will go through certain circumstances that will cause us to have those lesser things in our life cut away we will no longer see them as important the pruning process is not enjoyable at the time it is actually painful but the end result of the pruning process is much more fruit and that is joy when you're bearing fruit that's going to remain precious fruit fruit that's going to go into eternity and you might ask well what does that fruit look like well your life is going to be a wellspring for other people you are actually a well of the spirit of the lord you have living water inside you you have the power of the holy spirit within you and people can come who are seeking christ or who's seeking direction and they can drink from your well and be blessed people are influenced by you when people begin to connect with you because you're connected to christ they come closer to jesus and they too will enter into that wonderful covenantal relationship of committing uh, laying down their life for the lord so as you move in that you're going to see greater influence that you have with people and in the territory that god has placed you one of the areas would be in the fellowship of other saints um, in the fellowship of your ministry you you may be discipling people or you may be interceding for people and you're very much tied to people connected to people you're one with people in your fellowship because they're one with jesus and so you begin to bear this fruit another way to look at fruit is do you have peace in your life do you have this wonderful characteristic that when the storm is upon you you have an undisturbed tranquil perspective of things because you know you can trust the lord because you've trusted him in the past he's always come through for you so you are a very stable individual people that are going through storms they're going to look for people who are stable are more stable than themselves so that that person can help them to stand and that's a beautiful thing so you're able to bear that kind of fruit to help others in their time of temptation or trial or tribulation to be able to stand and having done all to stand so that in a real sense is having fruit to your account it says that you are already clean because of the word which i have spoken to you there's a cleansing pruning is just going deeper in the cleansing you're already born again you already understand that when you sin you go to the lord you confess your sin and he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sin and the blood of christ cleanses you from all sin so you already are in the lord you're already moving forward but the lord is coming in now to subtract certain things from you that you may have thought uh, were not significant or are per perhaps insignificant it's a better word um, to the Lord even insignificant things can keep you or distract you from going further in the Lord and many times the Lord will orchestrate situations where activities that you don't really see as sinful are as distractions from the Lord he will work a work in you to cleanse you of that where you'll get to the point where you can see just how insignificant it is and that it's really pulling you away from the Lord not causing you to go further and deeper in God so that is his plan now I want to ask you is that something that you want and that's important because a true disciple of Jesus wants to go deeper 
and uh, understands that whatever the Lord wants to subtract from their life, he's willing for that to take place. I can tell you this, that anything the Lord is going to subtract from you or prune out of you, it's only going to make way or widen the capacity in your life to bring greater fruit in your life, which is going to give you a greater sense of peace, security, uh, and tranquility. And I think anybody would want that for something lesser in their life that can never bring that. It says, abide in me. And I in you, very powerful, Christ is saying, abide in me. In other words, live in me, dwell in me, and I will do the same for you. What happens over time is that your thoughts, what you think about, are all in the presence of the Lord. You are thinking about Christ, and Christ is thinking about you. Um, you actually have dialogues with the Lord Jesus. You, you can see Christ in all of his glory. Um, you can visit the Lord in his heavenly places through the Spirit because you are in heavenly places in Christ. And the Spirit of God will show you visions, prophetic visions. And yes, the Lord Jesus will teach you and he will help you to rest. Abide in me and I in you. He, that is the key. You become one with Christ. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you are abiding in me. So there has to be a oneness for that fruit to come. The reason why people do not produce fruit is simply they're not abiding in Christ. They're, they're, they're abiding in someone. They are abiding in something, but they're not abiding in Christ. And so he emphasizes that we are to abide in him as the branch cannot bear fruit unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you what? Abide in me. Again, he reemphasizes, I am the vine and you are the branches. And so we have to see who we are. Jesus is the vine, which is where the power comes for the fruit to be produced. And we are the branch. And as we are in Christ, his power will bear fruit in our life. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. Again, it's not just about bearing fruit. No, it's about bearing much fruit. That means you become a very productive person in the kingdom of God with great influence. For without me, you can do nothing. That is a resounding truth. You cannot do anything without Christ. And you have to position yourself there. And even with what you might think is trivial, the Lord will take that triviality and make it bear fruit if it is done under his auspices, under his authority, and under his direction. What you might think is the most insignificant thing will be very powerful if it is directed by him because you are abiding in him. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. Now that is another hint here. How do you abide in Christ? You have deep fellowship with him. You pray, you speak to him. But very characteristically, you are going to hear his words. The words that have been written in scripture, those words that Christ have said, you will begin to speak, particularly in your prayer life particularly when you are decreeing or declaring a thing, these words will well up in you and you will speak them. And because you do that, your prayers will be answered. Your prayers will be very powerful and they too will bear fruit. They will bear great reward if you abide in Christ and his words abide in you. So there's really no excuse for you not to read the word. And renew your mind to the word. It's essential for you to grow and bear fruit. 
Then he goes on to say, if you do that, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear fruit. So will you be my disciple. You want to be a disciple of Jesus. You will be one in Christ. You will have an intimate relationship with him. You will submit to times of chastening because the scripture makes it plain that a son of God will be chastened by God. And you will, you will want that. You will not turn away from that. And when things happen to you, particularly afflictions happen to you, you do not turn away from God. You turn to God because uh, Psalms 34, 19 says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. You don't you don't become hard when the sun of affliction, sunshine of affliction shines on you. No, actually, you are like wax and you melt before the Lord because your help comes from him. And I want to close with Hebrews 12, 11. Now, no chastening discipline pruning for the present seems to be joyous no but grievous in other words it's going to be painful nevertheless afterwards it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised by by them so when times come of tribulation when chastening comes in your life the Lord is up to something good and you believe that he loves you, you remain in him, you have his words in you, you're able to pray and speak those things, you're able to remain calm and move forward because you're yielding now to the work of chastening. And after the trial and tribulation is over, there's going to be great joy because the peaceable fruit of righteousness now is manifested in your life. And you have more power. You have more of a capacity to have an undisturbed mind, a mind of peace, knowing that Jesus is your refuge and your safety. That is the life of a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Now may the Lord bless you. And may he keep you, may he cause his face to shine upon you, to be gracious unto you, to give you favor. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.